Praise the Lord, everybody, on this Thursday afternoon. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is a day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. On this 30 on Thursday, we're so grateful that you've joined us on today. We're so honored that God has given us one more chance to share around the word of the Lord, whether you're on Instagram today, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on the phone line, whether you're on our website, whether you're in the sanctuary, we praise God for your presence on this day. And this is truly the day that our God has made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in everything God has for us on today. We are so honored and so blessed to be alive today just to give God a chance to, to do in us what the Lord desires to do in all of us on today. We're grateful. We're grateful that we have a God who's always there for us, who's there to meet us, who's there to attend to our needs. For he is our help. He is our help. And all of our help comes from the Lord. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it's coming. Sometimes it doesn't look like it's coming. But that's the assurance that we have as people of faith that we can lift our heads to the heavens. We can lift our heads to the hills from whence cometh our help. The assurance that God gives us is that no matter what life brings to us as people of faith, our hope rests not in what's going on around us, but our hope rests in who has us. So as you begin now to just to allow your mind and your spirit to be awakened afresh today. I know it's already 12 o'clock and you're looking and saying, Preacher, it's almost half the day's gone, but some of us, truth be told, can wake up and go a whole day and never have our spirits awakened, never have our minds awakened, never have our hopes rekindled, never have our expectations lifted. So as you prepare your hearts and your minds now for this 30 on Thursday, I just want you to let your mind be awake as you look to heaven, as you look to the hills, and as you recognize where all of your help comes from. It doesn't come from the folk in our lives. It's wonderful when people can help you, but it's also a reassuring thing to know that when people cannot help me, my God is able. My God is able. My God is able. My God is able. Your God is able. Your God is more than able. Hallelujah. He will not suffer your foot to be moved. Hallelujah. The Lord who keepeth thee he is your God. He is your God. Bow your heads for a moment. Father, we thank you today. We thank you even right now, God, that despite what's going on around us, we, we have the assurance of knowing that you are still our God. We have the comfort in knowing that there is somebody who's walking with us through this thing called life, that we have a God who has never abandoned us, never forsaken us, never forgotten us. So as we stand in this moment of this day and we reflect on just how far you have brought us, we say thank you. Thank you for being our help. Thank you for being our help. Hallelujah. With our hands lifted up, we say thank you for being our help. That all of our help comes from the Lord. Every ounce of our strength, every ounce of our being, every ounce of our tomorrow comes from you. And we bless you on today, God. We thank you. That's our testimony, Lord, that all of our help, hallelujah, comes from you. All of our strength comes from you. When we are weak, 
you said you're strong. When we don't have the things changed in our lives the way we would like for them to be, you said that your grace is sufficient. So we lift our hands today to you, God, in total praise, recognizing that you alone are God. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord. And as we turn our attention today, God, to your word and to this time of sharing and worshiping and praising and lifting you up, we do so unashamedly. We do so with the liberty in our spirit. We do so knowing that regardless of what life brings, you are still able to keep us from falling. So bless us now, Lord, as we turn to your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. And for all of you all who are joining us today, we praise God for your presence today. If you're in the sanctuary, praise God. If you're on the phone line, if you're on Instagram, Facebook Live website, we give God praise for you on this Thursday, 30 on Thursday. We step away from the world's challenges, the world's problems, and we come to get ourselves reinvigorated all over again. And there is a word today from the Lord, a word that hopefully gives all of us some hope. Because if you're like me, let me be honest and transparent before you today, if you're like me and you've been watching the news the last couple of days, it has just totally depleted you. It has taken every ounce of your energy. It has just drained you to think that we live in a world today where people would abandon and forsake and put children's lives on the chopping block just to preserve their own place of power. We, 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 we have been inundated time and time and time again with all of the bad news. Somebody once said, if it weren't for no bad news, I don't know if I have any news at all, amen. But we've heard so much bad news lately. And I was sitting in my house yesterday evening, and I was really, I was scrolling through social media, and the more I scrolled, the more frustrated I became, the more dejected I was getting. And the Lord had to speak to me and to remind me of something very important. Because you might as well be honest, like I'm going to be honest. Sometimes life can have you swallowed up where you can forget the good things about life. You can forget that your hope is really not anchored in what man gives you, but your hope is anchored in who God is to you. So the Lord had to remind me of something last night, and it's, it's found in Psalm 121. This is what the Word of God says. It says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. And the question is raised, where does my help come from? After a pause, verse 2 says, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will, ne will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. And, and, and I want to leave this thought in your mind today because sometimes we can be caught up in life's flow, life's ebb and flow, life's ups and downs, that sometimes we find ourselves asking the wrong question. Have, have you ever ask the wrong question. You see, Psalm 121, it opens for us today by, by asking a question. And, and the question is, and it's a very relevant question, especially in an hour like this, where is man's help? Where is man's real help coming from? Now, we may not want to testify to this fact today, but it's a common question. And it's a question that whether we verbalize it or not, all of us have that question at least one time in our lives. I wish I had some help today. And, and the answer, and the answer from the psalmist, the answer from Psalm 121, can only come from a person who has learned firsthand where their help comes from. 
The question is raised, and it's this psalm is a psalm that is sung by worshipers on their way to worship. Don't miss that. It is song sung by pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem. It is sung by people of faith as they go to church. Listen to what it says. Some of the church folk on their way to church are saying, Lord, where, where does our help come from? They get into the sanctuary. They, they get into the midst of the congregation. And there's somebody in the congregation who both answers the question as well as asking the same question that somebody else may be verbalizing. The question, is, the question and the answer are delivered in the presence of the congregation. The question is asked by somebody who, who has ever had a need. And I want to ask you today, have you ever had a need in your life? And you said, where is my help going to come from? But, but see, unlike the person who is not aware of where their help comes from, that there is somebody in the congregation, somebody in the midst of the congregation. There's a, a worshiper in the midst who says, I will look to the hills. There it is right there. From whence cometh my help. Because all of my help comes from the Lord. See, the hills of Zion is the place that symbolically represents the presence of God. And so what they were saying to us is that they were going to look to the hills. They were going to look to a high place. They were going to look up beyond where they were. They want to lift their heads and look up to heaven because it's up at heaven's trajectory where they realize where all of their help comes from. See, the question today, my brothers and sisters, is not a question of whether help will come, but the question was the wrong question because as worshipers going to worship, their hope should have already been placed in Almighty God. Don't miss that. So the question that the worshipers had should not have been a question that said, where is our help coming from? But the question should have said, when is our help going to come? How soon is our help going to come? Because when you have a faith in God, when you have trust in God, your faith in God allows you to look at your circumstances with a degree of hope and expectation. There it is right there. See, as long as you understand that God is the one who orders the steps, that God is the one who handles all of our affairs. That God is the one who makes a way out of no way. Then you can look at all your surroundings and not ask the question, where is our help going to come from? But ask the question, when is God going to move on our behalf? Somebody should have got happy right there. Which way is God going to do it? How, how is God going to do it? How soon is God going to do it? See, don't miss the point here. These were worshipers. These were people who were going to worship God. And they were going to worship God, and they had the wrong question on the tongue in their mouth. And I wonder today, has anybody ever gone to church, ever shown up in worship, and you've had the wrong question in your heart? Questions like, Lord, why did you let me get sick? Questions like, Lord, why is this going on in my life? Questions like, Lord, how come you let all this madness happen? As opposed to, Lord, when are you going to turn this thing around? Lord, how are you going to turn this thing around? Because when you understand that he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, then you realize that everything in between the start and the finish of it all, God is the one who has complete control over it. He is the sovereign God the sovereign creator of heaven and earth. That's what it says in verse three, in verse 2. My help comes from the Lord. Look, the maker of heaven and earth. See, the answer is a direct answer. The, he says, "My our help is coming from the presence of God. In other words, God does not need any backup to do what God needs to do in our lives. Our help is coming from God and from God himself. See, the question may have started out as they went to worship, as one that says, where is our help going to come from? But before they finished worship, the answer came to them. Before they finished worship, the, the, the leader in the, in, in the congregation did not answer their question where it was coming from, but he answered their question about how their help is going to come. God help us today. And every now and again, we got to be reminded of how God helps us in the times of trouble. I know we say he is a very present help in the time of trouble, but sometimes we want to know how does God help us in our troubles. And I'm glad you asked. Because 
because the psalm says the first thing God does is that God will keep you from slipping in the moment of your anxiety. Look at verses 3 and 4. He says, he will not let your foot slip. He, will, he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. God's constant awareness of the psalmist's situation reassures all of us today that God will continue his faithful attention to the needs we have in our lives. He says he will keep your foot from slipping. And what he's talking about right here is the idea they were all filled with anxiety. They were all filled with concern. They were all filled with their emotions running wild. And I will ask you, as you look around the landscape of our lives today, have you ever been caught up with your emotions running wild? Have you ever found yourself and your feelings are playing tricks on you? Have you ever found yourself and your mind began to run away and tell you and lead you down a path that wasn't the path God would desire you to be in? And you were filled with anxiety. And the more anxiety you got, the less hope you became to have. So when the psalmist says he won't let your foot slip, he's telling us today that in your moment of anxiety, God will keep you from going over the edge. I wish I had somebody today who don't mind typing on the screen, I won't go over the edge, amen. See, God's constant awareness of the psalmist's situation gives all of us the hope we need that he says the believer must not think that God has neglected him. Why? Because God never slumbers nor sleeps. God is always watchful. God is always attentive. God is always concerned. God is always knowledgeable about what it is you are dealing with because he is an infinite intelligent spirit. We know him to be an omniscient God, the God who knows everything. And so you don't have to be concerned when life seems to throw you a lemon. Just go ahead and take some water and make some lemonade, believing that God will turn it around. I wish I had somebody today who said, God will keep my feet from slipping. Amen. Look, he said, God will help you because God has been helping you. It's not if God or where our help is coming from, it is how will God help us in our times of trouble. God will keep you from slipping. He will keep you from falling into a deep place of anxiety and hopelessness. And if a child of God loses anything in this life, you ought not ever lose your hope. Because once you lose your hope, it's a long way to get back to where you got to get to. But I'm so glad that God has given us the hope of glory down on the inside of us in the person of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. God has filled us with his spirit to allow us to have hope when all life seems to be swallowing us up. He said, God will help you. Not only will God keep you from slipping, here it is, but God will shield you from harm. Lord, have mercy. Look at verses 5 and 7. He says, the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. Somebody ought to get happy right there. The Lord will keep you. Let me shout myself. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord will keep you from all harm. Look, protecting him. The psalmist says, God will protect me from the harmful stroke of the sun and the harmful effect of the moon. See, it was believed in that culture that the moon was believed to have harmful effects on the lives of God's people. And what he's really talking about here is the idea that he recognizes that God is his keeper. God is his constant God. God is his perpetual around the clock witness protection program. God is the one who will surround him with angels and keep watch over him. When he's up, God is watching. When he's down, God is watching. When the sun is shining, God is watching him. When the clouds are raging, God's are watching him. He's letting us know today that God is our keeper. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I've learned to understand that can't nobody keep me quite like God can. Can't nobody hold me quite like God can. When I feel like losing my mind, God keeps my mind in perfect peace. The Bible says, though, if you keep your mind stayed on him, he will keep you in perfect peace. The psalmist says God never slumbers and God never sleeps. And if God is not going to sleep, and if God is going to be awake, 
then every now and again you ought to go to bed and get your own self some rest. If God's going to be up all night long like ADT, watching over your premises and watching over your life, you ought to lay your head down on your pillow and get a big, great big yawn in and go on and go to bed. Because God has been keeping you. Can I bless you real quick? God's been keeping you already from danger seen and unseen. Some stuff that was supposed to take you out, God blocked it off your life. Some stuff that was supposed to take you under, God stopped it off your life. Some stuff that was supposed to cause you to go cocoa for cocoa puffs, God held it back off you. And then God blocked the stuff from killing you that you knew was going to get you. God stopped some stuff from harming you that you knew was a threat to your life. And that's why every now and again, you have to pause and give God praise. Listen, not for the tangible things God has brought in your life, but praise God for being a keeper on your life. I wish I had somebody out there today who don't mind hollering, he is a keeper, amen. God will keep you when you cannot keep yourself. The psalmist says, he does not slumber, he does not sleep, he will be your protection at your right hand. He will keep the harm from coming on your life. And I know we live in a day right now where everything is suspect. Everything is unpredictable. Everything is uncertain. Everything is unclear. But when you understand who your God is, when you understand how your God works, when you understand that God has always been your help, you realize that no matter what comes my way, God will somehow protect me and keep me because the Bible does still declare that in all things, God works together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are the call according to his purpose. I'm going to get happy all by myself today because I realize there's some stuff in my life right now that God is keeping my mind together and keeping me from going over the edge. Amen. God, God, he said, he said, he said, God, God will, God will work in your life by, by keeping you from slipping in your moment of anxiety. That God will shield the harm off of his life. And then he says, listen, this, here's the good news right here. God will guard him, listen, constantly. <laughs> You've got perpetual protection. How do you know, preacher? Look at the last verse. He says, the Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Okay, there it is right there. Now, God will not only watch over your coming and going in the present, but God will watch over your coming and going in the future. He, he says, the one thing I come to understand is that God will be there in my life constantly to guard me. This is, this is the idea of, 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 of a word called the foreverness of God. <laughs> the, the eternality of God. The, the, the eternalness of God. That he's saying that, that God will forever be guarding over his children, that God will forever be guarding over the lives of those who put their trust in Almighty God. See, when you read these verses, verses 1 through 8, the psalmist uses the form of the verb guard and watch at least six times between verses 3 through 8. Between 3 through 8, he uses the verb guard or watch, some form of it, at least six times. Time. This statement reflects for us today that the psalmist has gotten some insight, some insight that has concluded or come to be derived through his experience with Almighty God. Now, in order to fully appreciate what he's saying in Psalm 121, you got to go back over to Psalm 8, verse 4, when the psalmist raises the question, he, what are mere mortals that you, God, think about them? Human beings, that you care for them. Well, God, 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 what makes man so important to you, God, that, that, that you would tend to the very needs that were made a little lower than the angels? Well, what is it about man, God, that will cause you to be so concerned about them? See, that's the question that's raised in Psalm 8. So when you get to Psalm 121, Another psalmist now comes and he, 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 he confirms for us what the first question was raised, what it meant, and the concern, and the thought behind it. He says that the same God who made man a little lower than the angels, his concern for man is so great 
that God will constantly watch over them. The psalmist has gained insight that, that, that even during the darkest moments of his life, that God's concern for him fueled their hope, here it is, for God's intervention. That he understood that, that I've gained some insight in this thing called life. And, and the insight I have gained is found in the fact that, that God is so preoccupied with my outcome. God help me today. God, God is so concerned about my well-being that his concern for me is what fuels my hope that God will intervene. Oh, Lord, help me. That God will intervene in my situation. I'll say it again for you. He said that I've come to a place in my journey where I've gained a fresh insight that God's concern for me is so overwhelming to me that his concern for me fuels my hope that God will intervene God, on my behalf. And when you know that God is really that concerned about you, that, that fuels your expectation, not to say, where is my help coming from? But it fuels your expectation to say, when will God get this mess straight? How will God step in? How soon will God make it all right? I wish I had somebody today on this 30 on Thursday who don't mind testifying right through that, that I serve a God who will always be on my side. I serve a God who gives me the hope to still believe that the best is yet to come. I serve a God who fuels my expectation because he is the God who will do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask, think, or imagine. I serve a God and that I say now unto him who is able to keep me from falling. I heard David say it like this, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And I heard Jesus say it like this over in Matthew 10, 30 and 31. He said, and the very hairs that are on your head are numbered by God. So don't be afraid. I said, don't be afraid. I said, don't be afraid. Because if God knows the numbers of hairs on your head, Jesus says you are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. And every now and then, we've got to reorganize our minds and our thoughts. Every now and then, we've got to go back to the beginning and remind ourselves, not where does our help come from, but to remind ourselves that God is still in control. God is still in charge. God is still God. And when God decides to move, God's going to move. And can't no demon, can't no policy, can't no law, can't no nothing keep God from moving. I serve a God, and you serve a God, and we serve a God who's up all the time. I serve a God, and you serve a God, and we serve a God that's got all power in his hand. All power in his hand. And every time you get confused and delusional, you ought to go on back over to Calvary. Every time you lose hope, go on back over to Calvary and remember what happened on that hill. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. He hung his head and then he died. He was dead on Friday. He was dead on Saturday. But somehow, way, God came through one more time. I wish I had somebody. God, I feel like preaching on Thursday. I wish I had somebody who realizes down in your soul that God will come through. Won't he do it? I said God will come through. Won't he do it? He may not come when you want him, but the one thing I do know, everybody may have a Friday. You may have to live through Saturday, but if you hang on in there with God, you will have a Sunday morning because God is still God. He is still God. He is still God. Amen. And sometimes we ask the wrong question. But my brothers and my sisters, on this day, we don't ask where our help comes from. The question we raise today is when, 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 and how soon will our help come? Amen. Because that's the kind of God that we serve. When will it come? He is our shield. He will not 
suffer, our foot to be moved. God will keep you from slipping into anxiety and into depression. God will keep you from slipping into that dungeon of discouragement. He's able. And if you don't believe it, there's somebody in your life right now who can testify to you about what God did for them. And since God is no respecter of persons, what God has done for one, he will surely do for another. The psalmist says, he'll keep my foot from slipping. And, and, and then he says, let's know that God will also protect us. God will shield you from harm. He'll be at your shade at your right hand. The sun won't harm you. The moon won't harm you. That's not literal. It's figuratively that when things show up in your life that have the potential to harm you, God will shield you. That's what he's learned over the journey of his life. And if God has ever brought you out of anything in your life, that ought to be enough to encourage you right there. That he brought me out of that last situation. He brought me out of that last problem. He protected me in that last issue. He'll shield you. And then he says, God will guard you constantly. Yet you're uprising and you're downsetting. You're coming and you're going. God will be right there to anchor you and shield you. So on this day, my brothers and my sisters, despite what the world is telling us right now, despite what the news is bringing to our table right now, despite all the stuff we have to deal with and contend with, the question is not where is our help coming from? The question is how soon will God act? The question is how will God act? Because that gives me something favorable to look for. So on this 30 on 30, God, I pray in the name of Jesus for every person listening today that you will reignite their hope to remind them, Lord, that you are still God. Despite what's going on around them, you are still God. And every now and again, we have to reorient ourselves to the questions we're asking to realize who we are and who you are in us. Bless them now, O oh Lord. As you keep us through this day, keep our minds, keep our hearts. Bless our homes and our families. And we promise to give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us today for 30 on 30. Hope and pray you have a wonderful rest of the week. And we'll see you on Sunday. Peace.